in whose name and authority and power all things are possible. Father, your children have gathered before your mighty presence tonight, and we are covering the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus, and we are presenting ourselves to you, mighty God, asking that you may show your mercy again. Father, show your mercy again. We need your mercy. We are coming to you, Lord, knowing fully well that the power that we need tonight can only come from you. And so, Father, the God of mercy, we ask for mercy, Lord. We need mercy at this hour, for we cannot proceed in this prayer without obtaining mercy from you. Father, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, your word says, Let us therefore then approach God's grace, God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Father, this is our time of need. We need your grace, Father. We need your mercy, O oh Lord. We need to be and to approach your throne of grace tonight. We need the grace to function in this prayer, the grace to pray this night, the grace to persevere in prayer until things begin to happen. Until wonders begin to happen. Father, we need that grace tonight. Come and touch us again. Come and reveal yourself to us. Touch our shoulders, touch our lips, touch our tongues, that your power will begin to strengthen us tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we need you, Holy Father. We cannot do without you. Let your power descend upon us. Let your Shekinah descend upon us in the name of Jesus. Let there be a new level tonight in the spiritual realm. Let there be a release of, of apostolic waves upon your children at this hour in the name of Jesus. Father, O oh Lord, the hour has come. Touch us in a special way, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus. Hail, Jesus, cover us with your blood. Cleanse us, O oh Lord, with your blood. Let your blood remove every sin, Holy Father. Let your blood make us clean again. Make us sins again, Lord. Have mercy on us according to your loving kindness and according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Father, blot out our transgressions. Who can do this if not you, Holy Father? Please, so tonight, let not sin be our limitations tonight. Let sin never bring obstacles to our receiving from you tonight. Father, have your way. Because we have asked for mercy, we know we have received the mercy. And now, Father, since it has pleased you to forgive our sins and help us to receive your mercy, then, Father, we ask you to pour your flesh upon your children. Let your blood be poured upon us, Lord. Let your extraordinary strength be poured upon your children. Shatter into peace every obstacle to this prayer. Hey, oh, Jesus. Pull down every ancient gate tonight. Smash spiritual bars and the iron membranes that have been set up in the spiritual realm to stop our receiving from you tonight or to stop us from encountering you at your throne of grace, mighty Jesus. Let the atmosphere change into a miraculous atmosphere. Let the atmosphere become too hot for the enemy to prevail. For how can they prevail when your fire is here? Father, let the Holy Spirit take over. Let your spirit remove every spirit of distraction to this prayer. Every spirit that wants to make this, spirit, this prayer not to bring glory to God, Father, by your power, we arrest them tonight. And so we take authority over demonic atmospheres, over satanic atmospheres, and all the climates. Father, we are taking over them now by the power of your name. We are destroying every satanic atmosphere and climates created by cultic activities to alter the blessings of your children. We cancel them tonight. Every image is Projected by the devil, we cancel tonight every spirit of false apparition 
We cancel them tonight. Spirit of incantations, of ill spoken words, spirits of witchcraft and hostile powers of the enemies, spirit of demonic terrorism. Father, we stand against them tonight. We are commanding them to become disabled. Let the atmosphere become hostile to unclean spirits. Father, we are raging spiritual violence against satanic highways, satanic networks, satanic transportation systems, all the agenda to attack this prayer in any form and manner. Father, we are commanding such plan to fail in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let things begin to shift into our favor. Let the spiritual climate begin to shift into our favor. Let the economic climate begin to shift into our favor, Lord. Father, the hour has come. Hell, oh, we command the atmosphere to be filled with the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, take over. Holy go take over. Be on the throne again. When you are on the throne, you are in charge. And what you want will happen, Papa. Hell, oh, Father, fill the atmosphere with your glory. We cannot function in the flesh. And so we have no room for the flesh. We are not inviting the spirit of the flesh. We rather repeat every manifestation of the ugly head of the spirit of the flesh. They have no share in this prayer meeting. They have no seat in this prayer meeting. Holy Father, have your way. We alter the environment of the flesh. And we declare today that this prayer meeting shall be very unsuitable for the ministry of the devil. Let our relationship with you, Jesus, begin to thrive. Let this ministry begin to thrive. Let your Holy Spirit bring love. Let the love begin to thrive in this ministry, in this prayer meeting. Let your business thrive. Let your divine ideas thrive in the name of Jesus. Through the works you are going to do tonight, let this ministry be blessed. All families be blessed. All nations be blessed. All the government be blessed. Even the economy of your people be blessed. Let the supernatural be blessed. Let the miracles be blessed. Let everywhere be blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we walk tonight in your name. We engage in the powers of darkness in your name, in the power that is in your name. For so our word says, in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. So we stand on your blood, the blood that is shed on the cross of Calvary, the blood of the Lamb. And who are resisting satanic networks tonight by the blood of the Lamb? The blood of the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. By him, evil was destroyed. By him, evil was crippled. That Jesus may reign and heaven shall take supreme power over the affairs of men. For the Bible says that for this reason, while the Son of Man made manifest, that he will destroy the works of the devil. First John 3 verse 8. So we stand on that word of God tonight. That every work of the devil, all the satanic signatures, all the footprints, be completely erased by the power of the blood of Jesus. Father, have your way. Oh, Jesus. We decree tonight. And we declare tonight that the works of darkness is destroyed in the name of Jesus. We declare that every task over our lives, over our families, be reversed. Over our businesses, our destinies be reversed. Over our children, let such causes be reversed right now in the name of Jesus. Every arrow projected at us will command them to backfire right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Therefore, standing on the word of God on some night one, we are arresting every demonic spirit, every spirit on assignment. Again, the message of this night through the word of God, 
we cripple them. As Jesus empowers us with his angelic host of war to destroy the powers of darkness tonight. In the name of Jesus, we resist territorial strongholds. We resist satanic entanglements. In all their forms and manner, we command them to be designated. In the name of Jesus, we pray tonight that those who have been in prison shall be set free. For who else could set people free if not Jesus? Oh, Father, through the prayer, let your children be free. Through this prayer, let the great things begin to happen, Lord. Through this prayer, let your children begin to operate at a new level, at a higher level in spirit to reign. Father, as you pray, manifest your power. Manifest your power. Manifest your power. Marabakorobo Shere Makanda Yaba. Father, manifest your power. The hour has come. That tonight somebody is joining, joining me to pray that the spirit of shame is destroyed, that the spirit of embarrassment is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let somebody join me to pray right now that the spirit that has supposedly harassed your life that has destroyed tonight, that the spirit of iniquity is destroyed in the name of Jesus, that satanic pride, satanic strongholds are pulled down, that the spirit of stigmatization are destroyed right now. Every spirit of black men, we are setting them on fire. We are setting them on fire. Satanic limitations, satanic illusions, satanic addictions, satanic restrictions, satanic culture, and all the entrenchments, all the cultic strongholds, all the spirit of Traditional, evil traditions and the witness, we are setting them on fire. Every satanic structure that rises against the person of Jesus, against the altar of Jesus, we are setting them on fire tonight. Fire prevail. Free your people from limitations tonight. Free your people from handicaps tonight. Let your people who are being handicapped to your spirit be free tonight. Father, take over. Holy Spirit, take over. Every anti class spirit, anti Christian spirit, let them receive consuming fire tonight in the name of Jesus. Go, oh, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight because we know you have done it. Thank you tonight because we know you have come down. Thank you tonight because you are seated on the throne to bless your children tonight. Blessings are already smelling because you are here. Thank you, mighty God, that you have come to arrest what have been arresting your children. We appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, Asia God. Thank you, King of Glory. Just begin to thank him. Begin to appreciate him now for what he has done already. Begin to glorify his name. He is the mighty God. He is the king of glory. He is the ancient of days. He is the God who can do all things. When he comes, things will begin to change into his mind. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You have done it. It is well. Done it. It is well. Done it again, it is well, it is well with my soul. He has done it again, it is well, he has done it, it is well. Done it again, it is well, it is well with our soul. In our families, it is well, families, it is well. Families, it is well, it is well with our soul. It is well with our soul. And that brings us, Lord, to the subject that you have set up as your plan for your children tonight. And then, my dear people of God, I had the pleasure to welcome every one of us to the hands of Jesus and many ministries. Today is day four, part three of our prayer match with Jesus. The day four has been dealing with weapons against spiritual tyrants. 
weapons against spiritual tyrants. Ever since we entered into the fall of the prayer meeting of March, we have been dealing with weapons against spiritual tyrants. If you have missed the part one and two of this message, you are encouraged to replay the part one and part two from our YouTube channel. That is the YouTube channel of the Heart of Jesus and Mary Ministries. The book we are using for the manual is, or for the prayer is, the Invisible War, Volume 2, by Brother Uwakwe Chuku. Today we are focusing on page 40 of our prayer manual and continuing to the rest of the day four. And in the last leg of this prayer, which was day two, sorry, day four, part two of the message, we place emphasis on prayer. Emphasis was placed on prayer as a very strong weapon to deal with the enemy. As a matter of fact, prayer is a weapon. It is by prayer that you can fight the enemy. And when you are a very prayerful Christian, the devil will be afraid of you. But every prayer Christian cannot stop the devil because they do not have the power to stop him. A prayerless Christian is simply a powerless Christian. Why? Because he has no connection or relationship with Jesus who finds his battle anyway. Regrettably, friends, in as much as prayer is so important and fundamental in the victory that ought to come to a child of God, yet many people of God have put prayer under the bed. Many people of God have just passively slipped and they spiraled downwards into a prayerless living, which is a dangerous life. When will you decide to put on your spiritual armor, child of God? When will such prayerless Christian learn to dress for spiritual battles, to take on his spiritual armors and dress for battle? When will such a prayerless Christian decide to make heaven proud of him or her as he uses those spiritual armors that God has given to him or her to fight the spiritual forces that have been molesting his life or her life, as the case may be. I do not think that such a child of God <laughs> has any time left to make that decision than to make that decision now. And if you are so the child of God that God is talking to tonight to wake up from spiritual slumber into a, a life of strong prayer life, then you have to make a decision now, this night. Because delay to make the decision might cost you your life. Some time ago, it was shared in this ministry how a, a, a priest, a servant of God, was preaching one day, and uh, he made an altar call, and the uh, people were coming out to give their life to Christ, but there was a lady that came with a boyfriend, and this lady wanted to go and answer that call. But the boyfriend told her, you know, what are you trying to do? 
don't mind this thing. This, these are all semantics. These are all just emotional expressions. Just say, yeah, don't go anywhere. And uh, she listened to the boyfriend. The boyfriend convinced her not to come out to give her life to Christ because she was trying to please the, the boyfriend. By the way, at the end of that program, they were going home and there was an accident on the way. And only one person died. And that was that girl. The last opportunity she had to reconcile with Jesus was that night. But she did not take, that, take advantage of that opportunity. Or perhaps she may have, upon giving her life to Christ that night, God will show her mercy to destroy the spirit of death that was encroaching to her territory. My dear friends, like that altar call that day that that girl ignored, there is another altar call, and there's a hope that you will not ignore it. There's a hope that we shall not ignore that call, that altar call. And this altar call is the altar call to give our lives into prayer. To become slaves to prayer. You see, when you slave to something, you are very submissive to that thing. All your life is to please that thing. A slave pleases his or her master. In fact, a, a slave has no right of his own. If you are a slave to prayer, it means that everything about your life is prayer. Your prayer is prayer. Your eating is prayer. Your going out of the house is prayer. Coming back from work is prayer. Your sleeping is prayer. Your waking up is prayer. Your work is prayer. Everything you are doing is prayer. You are bathing is prayer. You are cooking at the kitchen. It is a prayer. And that is what Jesus is going to do. Look at the first century church. It was simply a praying church. A church on fire. A church that could not be stopped. A church that could not be restricted. A church that could not be arrested. When you are a man of prayer, serious man of prayer, satanic limitations and illusions and restrictions cannot work. In your life. Evil entrenchments and the cultic strongholds and the powers of bewitchment cannot stand before you. You cannot be amputated spiritually. You cannot be crippled spiritually. Satanic impediments cannot arise and succeed against you. All that raise against you will be pulled down because you are a no-nonsense Christian. The power that rise people will not rise you. And any attempt to rise you, then your, the lion in you will begin to roar. And not the lion, Jesus himself, the lion of the tribe of Judah, who is in every prayer warrior, every child of God who is on fire. Jesus begins to manage the affairs of your life, manage your life, manage everything about you when we are inside him. One of the strengths of Jesus when he was on earth during his public ministry was prayer. While people were praying, I mean, while people were sleeping, Jesus would be praying all night. Many a time in the day, he would go into the cool, quiet place into the mountains, and will be there praying. And he taught the disciples how to pray. This prayer we call our Father's prayer. That's actually the prayer of Jesus. Jesus composed that prayer and gave it to the disciples. God did look at that 11 verse 2 and following. So the life of Jesus was a life of prayer. And not just was, it still is, because he prays for you. Do you know that? <laughs> Go and read Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. You see the Bible saying that Jesus lives to pray for them who come to God through him. He lives to pray for them, to intercede for them. Hell, my people of God, prayer is the way forward, simply speaking. It cannot be put in another way. 
So prayerless life is dangerous. And we can't afford to give the devil the luxuries to mess us up through prayerless living. Prayerless living is a careless living. All right? So we are called to put on the garment of prayer. It is by putting on the garment of prayer that we begin to molest the powers that have been molesting us. The gravity of the raging war calls for us to make that decision to be people of prayer. God has given us this ministry at a time like this to wake up the sleeping lions. There are so many people of God that God has given them the gift of prayer. I, I, I know what? They come to America, they forget to pray. They don't pray again. Seems to me that there are <laughs> something in the air in America, America, that many people who used to be very prayerful when, when coming to America to be, begin to be lazy in prayer. <laughs> no! Jesus. But our friends, I don't know how many of you that have met good marketers. You see, if you make a, meet a good marketer, he or she wants to use everything possible to make you buy that product. He engages you, keeps you spellbound, begins to promote his products, watching your emotions to see whether what he's saying is getting into you very well. And if he sees that, then he increases his gear. He continues to convince you using every semantic just to make sure that he gets your attention. <laughs> I can't help tonight but think of the marketer who is mounting pressure on his client to buy a product, saying, put on these boots now and let me watch you match on nails. I think of this marketer as someone who has boots, safety boots, safety wear to, to sell to you. Just think of that scenario. And all that this marketer is telling you is that this safety boot is not like the other safety boots. He is <laughs> talking down on other shoes or safety wears you have been familiar with. And all that he's telling you right now is that, look, try this boot. Don't put it on. You know how they do that, right? They want to hook you. They want to make sure you get it. They want to make sure you buy it. And he's telling you, put on the boots now. And let me watch you march on the nails. That this kind of boot is not like the other type of boots that when you buy it, they can't stand the, 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 the impact of, of nails. And that can be quite convincing. And you will buy such a, a safety wear just to protect yourself from the nails from uh, hazards. But I tell you tonight, Jesus has come tonight to, to come like a marketer to present to us his armor to wear, his own safety shoes to wear, his own safety belt, safety gear, safety Headdress to wear, safety hand gloves to wear for our own protection. And so Jesus, now like a good market, of course, he is, presents to us the kingdom of God. Telling us in Romans 14, verse 17, that the kingdom of God is not that of eating and drinking, but of Holy Ghost. And the joy in this Holy Ghost. The 
the kingdom of God. The kingdom of light. The kingdom of God's angels. That is the kingdom that we are called into. It is not a kingdom of eating and drinking. For the Bible makes it clear, Romans 14, verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what to eat or drink. It is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. How can we pray without the help of the Holy Spirit? You see that? <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit teaches us how to pray. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, how can you pray? I mean, how can you pray? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prayer. The Holy Spirit tells us, pray all the time. You remember 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. That was the Bible tells us, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. But my question to you is, how can you pray without ceasing, without stopping, if not by the help of the Holy Spirit? Eh? <laughs> the Holy Spirit is behind the prayer you are doing that pleases God. The Holy Spirit. A mighty spirit of God. The spirit of power. <laughs> Woo! Jesus. It is a spirit that gives the strength to us to pray. Without the Holy Spirit, we are, we are empty. And we can do nothing. Amen? Now, Jesus, whom I invite you to see tonight as a marketer, <laughs> marketing the kingdom of his father, his own kingdom. Now, he is telling us in Ephesians 13, 13, therefore, Put on the full armor of God. Jesus is the one talking to us tonight. About 2,000 years ago, he was speaking to the Ephesian church through the mouth of Paul, telling them to put on the full armor of God. Today, he is talking to us Telling us, like a good marketer, telling us, put on this safety wear. Put on this armor of God. Then, with your threshing boots, let God see you thresh the mountains and crush them and make the hills like a chaff. Isaiah 4, 15. And that's what Jesus is talking to us tonight. To put on the full armor of God. Not partial armor. Full armor of God. In such a way that no matter the arrow that is coming, no matter the direction, you are always protected. Where you have the full divine insurance. The full armor of God. Jesus said, put on the full armor of God. So that you were able to thresh the mountains and crush them and make the hills like a chaff. Some days ago, we prayed fervently marching on the mountains of problems. We are marching on them, putting them down. That was prayer. My dear friends, I would like to live 
you with three things to think about. Just put them. One, put off the cloak of prayerlessness now. Do you see yourself putting off the, the cloak, the garment of prayerlessness now? Because remember, we've got to make a decision right now. And maybe there's somebody in your family that you know is not prayerful. Pray now and say, God, let the cloak of prayerlessness fall out of that person tonight. That every cloak of prayerlessness in your life, let them drop tonight. Talk to God about it. Let that cloak of prayerlessness drop tonight. Number two, put on your full spiritual armor now. You say, oh, this is all now, now. That sounds like a command, right? But that is what it is. Put on your full armor, your spiritual armor, now. And then number three, put up for a fight to the devil, now. <laughs> you see, for you to put up a fight with the devil, you have to put off the cloak of prayerlessness. And then you have to now put on the cloak of prayer. You have to put on your full spiritual armor. Then you are ready. You are combat ready, re battle ready to fight the enemy. Only then can you put up fight with him. Putting up fight with him without doing any of these things before the fight is <laughs> a death sentence. I tell you the truth. It's dangerous. Let's do them now. Oh, Jesus. It is when you put off the cloak of prayerlessness and put on the full armor of God that you can fight the enemy and be able to run through the enemy's troops with your artillery of God's weapons. Can you imagine in your enemy's camp, they are loaded and you are running through the the camp and without being destroyed. The only way that can happen is that you are a man of prayer. That's how you run through the troops. That's how you run through satanic camps. Think of a camp where your blessings have been kept. The enemies have stolen your blessings and put it in their camp. Stole your children and put them in the camp. Took away your job, your health, and put them in the camp. How can you go to the camp and take what has been plundered, take what has been taken away from you, and escape without being hurt? Only when you are a true child of God that carries a heavy duty anointing of prayer. When you are fully armed, you are wearing the full armor of God. Then the enemy wants to bite you. They will send their state to bite you because they want to recover what they, what they stole from you. But because you are fully armed, the snake cannot bite you. Your body is like a, a bronze. Can a snake b b bite a bronze? No. Your whole body is like iron. <laughs> You are really dangerous. You are like a fire. They will see you, they run. And they leave everything they have seized from you. And all you need is to take them and leave. scot free. Running through the, the enemy's troop. Oh, Jesus. So in this moment of prayer, we are going to remember people in our families or perhaps ourselves, who are not prayerful. Who are not prayerful. We are going to pray for them tonight. The other day, Elisha wanted to be like Elijah. And Elijah told him, look, 
you, you want to be like me as you requested, but the only thing you can do to be like me is that if you see me going up, if you see me going up, you know what Elijah was trying to tell Elijah? If you will be spiritually agile, not to slumber him, not the sleeping child of God, if you will be active, if your eyes will be open, And so Elijah was not taken up, and Elisha saw him going up. And he said, my father, my father. Then the garment of fire dropped upon him. The garment of power, the garment of prayer. From that day, he became an extraordinary man of God, making Elisha to do more miracles than Elijah because of the mantle that he received. A man who received because he was a man of prayer. People who are charged in prayer, even when they are sleeping, spiritually they are awake. Please, learn that today. That's why when the enemy comes to attack them, they fight immediately. But their body is resting on the bed, but their spirit is at work, fighting, warring, or praising God. You have dreams where you are the mass praising God in fellowship, praising God, reading the Bible, fighting the enemy. Because your spirit is really free to serve God, not limited or encumbered by the forces of darkness. Help Jesus. So, my people of God, we are going to pray for ourselves for a spirit of pray prayerlessness to be taken away. Every garment of prayerlessness. Let them be dropped out of my life right now. Let them be taken away right now. Is there somebody in your life, in your, in your family, that you know is not prayerful? Oh, put your mouth and pray for that person and ask God to make that person prayerful now in the name of Jesus. As we are praying, God is answering tonight. As we are praying, the power of God is moving mightily in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, put your mouth and begin to pray. I say, God, make my husband a man of prayer. Make my wife, my children, people of prayer in the name of Jesus. Make my friends, people of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let my parish be a parish of fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the people in my subdivision become people of prayer in the name of Jesus. Let the prayer become an epidemic in my town, in my city, in the place I live, in my family, in the name of Jesus. Let the prayer become our food from today, become our dream from today, become our garden from today. In the name of Jesus, can you begin to pray now? Yes, my Lord. Begin to pray now. As God to adorn you with the prayer. Every spirit of prayerlessness, let them be crippled tonight. Let them be destroyed tonight. Let them carry fire tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, keep praying that prayer. Keep praying that prayer. Keep praying that prayer. Maraba korobo sheraba. And then the word of God came to Elisha telling him, look, if you will be awake, if your eyes will be open, you will receive the garment. You will receive the power. This night, we are supposed to have been sleeping. We are supposed to have gone far into sleep. But we are awake right now. We are awake and we are crying to God. We are awake and we are praying. Our eyes are awake. Oh, my God, I have let somebody receive the garment of prayer because that person is awake. I am receiving my garment of prayer because I am awake tonight. I am going as Elisha received the garment of prayer, as he received the cloak of prayer from the body of Elijah. So I am receiving my own garment of fire right now. I am receiving my garment of prayer right now because I am awake, because my eyes are open. I am receiving that garment of fire. Let somebody begin to pray now. Yes, my Lord, begin to blame my people, begin to blame my people, that because you are weak, 
Let God take you with the fire. That because you are awake, let God make you a fire brand Christian. Because you are awake, may God give you the garment of fire. May you wear the garment of fire. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 29 that our God is a consuming fire. If you are a child of God, you ought to be a moving fire. You ought to be a boiling fire. You ought to be a boiling water. Masaka Sayaba. When you are boiling water, when you are boiling water, how can the enemy swallow you? Who can swallow a boiling water? Demons cannot swallow you when you are boiling fire. They cannot mess up with you when you are boiling fire. I am a call of the Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask God to make a boiling fire. Let God make a liquid fire. Let God make a dangerous fire. Let God make a fire. And the Bible says, My Rakoro Mashere Basere, Rakoro Boshirima, Psalm 104, and God make his angel to the fire, and he make his minister to the fire. May God make you to be a minister. The same thing that God tells us in Hebrew, I am the Lord that make it to my angels. The spirit of mighty spirits, he make his angels, and he make his ministers to the minister of fire. And so may God make your prayer to be on fire tonight. Let him make you fire. Ask him to make you fire. Even now, somebody is wearing garment of fire. Somebody is wearing of fire. Somebody is wearing of fire. Oh, put him to pray. Receive that anointing now. As the song is moving now. Receive the power now. Receive the power now. Receive the power now. The power is all on you. The power of prayer. Take it. The power of Jesus is moving on. The blood of Jesus is moving on. The The power of Jesus is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving. It is moving on. It is moving. It is moving on. It is moving on. The power of Jesus is moving. The anointing of Jesus is moving on. The power of Jesus is moving on. The anointing of Jesus is moving on. The river. The power is moving. The power of Jesus is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving. It is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving on. It is moving. It is moving on. It is moving, it is moving, oh, it is moving. Behold the Lamb of God. 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 Behold the Lamb of Jesus. Behold the Lamb, behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb, behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of the blood, behold the Lamb of the blood, behold the Lamb of Jesus, behold, 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 behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of Jesus, behold the Lamb of the blood, behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of Jesus. Amen. Hell, Jesus, let us behold him who is our God. Who is the Lamb of God? Who is able to do all things for his children? Let the power of God decorate you tonight with the fire. May you be a moving fire, child of God. Zechariah 2 verse 5, and God promises he will make he will be a wall of fire surrounding his children. As your prayer is picking up and you are becoming fire. So you are becoming dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. And God's fire is encircling you, encircling your family. Oh, Jesus, let that fire of God 
locate you tonight. Locate you tonight. Oh, my Makuri, my Sheriba. Locate your people tonight. Locate your children tonight. We need the that divine visitation tonight. Father, divine touch. Divine touch. Divine touch. Oh, and that invites us to prayer point number four in page 41 of our prayer material, in which we have been invited to pray Psalm 73 with the psalmist for the victorious power of God to locate us at our point of prayer. Oh, Jesus. Psalm 76. God is renowned in Judah. My people of God, Judah is praise. And God is renowned in your praise. In Israel, his name is great. His tent is in Salem. His dwelling place is in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows and shields and the swords and the weapons of war. You are radiant with light, O oh God. More majestic than the mountains, rich with game. The valiant lie plundered. They sleep their last sleep. Amen. Not one of the warriors can lift his hand again. In the name of Jesus. At your rebuke, God of Jacob, both horse and chariots lie still. They were frozen. It is you alone who are to be feared. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven, you pronounce judgment, and the land feared and was quiet. When you, God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land, surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise. And the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make a vow to the Lord your God and fulfill them. Let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared. He breaks the spirits of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. Father, as we have presented and prayed this Psalm 76, we claim all the prayers for victory there. And we know that our victory is coming from you in the name of Jesus. And that brings us to prayer point number five. Jesus defeated the devil on the cross, my people of God, taking the cross as a weapon against the enemy. Place yourself and your family now under the cross of Jesus. And so at this point, if you have a cross around you, you can behold the cross at this hour. And hold your cross. And the cross is the place where Jesus defeated the devil. And if you don't have a cross right with you, then imagine a cross in your hand, a crucifix. Oh, Jesus, let this cross remind us where God sacrificed his son that brought the ultimate defeat of the devil. And so prayer point number five invites us to meditate on this cross where Jesus defeated the devil and taking this cross in our hands as a weapon against the devil, we place ourselves under the cross of Jesus. We place our destiny, we place our family under the cross of Jesus. And as we are doing this right now, the body of Jesus Christ on the cross takes all the bullets and arrows of Satan shot at me and my family. Anyone that is a target of the enemy's arrow, if they are shooting arrows to you, all that this prayer point of five is telling us is that Jesus will catch that arrow. The arrow with the bullets 
will not hit you. The bullets will not hit your family because you are now under the cross of Jesus, like being under an umbrella. So imagine a mighty cross with Jesus on the cross and everybody in your family is at the foot of the cross. How can a satanic arrow hit you? Oh, Jesus. If you look at the body of Jesus, you will see so many wounds on his body. These are the wounds caused by Jesus receiving all the bullets. These are the wounds incurred by the Jesus as he receives those bullets from you, as he's taking the bullets that were supposed to kill you and your family. And so we are declaring tonight that this somebody of Jesus takes all the bullets and the arrows of Satan shot at me and my family in the name of Jesus. I decree that the blood of the crucified Jesus Christ shields me and my family from every harm in the name of Jesus. I count upon the crucified Jesus to shield me from both, from above and from beneath, on my right and on my left, in my front, in the front of me and behind me, that I might be protected, walled in, encapsulated in a way that Satan may never gain any access to hot or destroy me from fulfilling my destiny again in the name of Jesus. Do you understand the prayer point, my friend, my people of God? When you are under the foot of the cross, you are protected. When you are under the foot of the cross, automatically you are shielded from above. Jesus shields you from above. He also shields you from beneath. Amen? And uh, on your right, he shields you. On your left, he sh you are shielded. Even in your front and behind you, you are shielded. That is maximum protection. It has seemed to say that Jesus walls you. Okay? That reminds us of Job chapter 1 verse 10. Where the Bible tells us that God walled the family of Job. He built a hedge of protection around the family of Job. Job's family was encapsulated by the divine power of God in a way that Satan could not have access into his family. It was only when God permitted Satan to have access into Job's family to attack him. That was only the time that the devil was able to enter into Job's family. But before that time, he was shielded. So as we are at the foot of the cross, we are shielded. Everyone in our family is shielded in the name of Jesus. We are shielded in the morning, we are shielded in the night. Our dreams are shielded. Our destinies are shielded. We shall not suffer accident of the devil. Devil, we plan as dead, but we are shielded. We are protected in Christ. And we are hidden with the Christ in God. I turn to Colossians 3 verse 3. And that brings us to prayer point number 6. Oh, and even now we are going to confess. In this prayer point of six, we confess the following forms of warfare as we engage in the spiritual battle. In the name of Jesus, that I have conquered the manifestations by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the word of my testimonies. This is the word of God according to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Can you open your mouth and pray that prayer number six? This is a very important prayer point. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, we are confessing with our mouth right now. We are confessing with our lips right now. 
that we are that we have conquered the demonic forces that i have conquered the demonic forces by the blood of the lamb by the blood of jesus and by the word of my testimony according to revelation chapter 12 verse 11 in the name of jesus yes my lord i decree in the name of jesus and i confess with my mouth that the word of god is a spiritual a spiritual two-edged sword in my hand piercing and cutting through the enemy according to hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 in the name of Jesus, I confess that the burning coals that went forth at his feet shall burn down as ashes every demonic altar that is speaking against my life, according to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 5, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. And according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, I confess that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth they must bow right now they must bow they cannot destroy me in the name of jesus yes my lord jesus i confess with my mouth that way i am cut down by the enemy's blow there i am confessing that there is a lifting up for me there is a lifting up for me. According to Job chapter 22, verse 29, there is a lifting up for me in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth that as I praise God, all the prison doors shall be thrown open and everyone's chain in my family shall come loose. According to Acts 16, verse 26, in the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth that my tongue is like a sharp razor. According to Psalm 52, verse 2, in the name of Jesus, and that my mouth is like a sharp sword. According to Psalm 57, verse 4, in the name of Jesus, and that my tongue is like a deadly arrow, pulling down and destroying the enemy. According to Jeremiah 29, verse 8, in the name of Jesus, and that my tongue is like a bow or like bows, pinning down the enemy down and pinning them to the walls. And according to Jeremiah 29, verse 3, and that according to Hebrew 4, verse 12, my tongue, oh, is like a two edged sword, like a two edged knife, slicing the enemy into pieces, destroying them. I'm messing up their territories in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Standing on prayer point number 6H, we are confessing now that with our mouths, we command every mountain, mountain to, take, to be taken up and to be thrown into the sea. And into Mark 11, verse 23, in the name of Jesus. I I confess with my mouth that every stubborn problem must go by my prayer and by fasting. According to Matthew 17, verse 21, in the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth, according to Luke 4, verse 18, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free and that everyone in my family is delivered today. And those who are oppressed in my family, those who are prisoners of the devil in my family are delivered today. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I confess with my mouth, standing on Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth, according to Psalm 35, verse 5, that the angels of God, oh, Rikatayaba, the angels of God are driving the enemies away. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth, according to Exodus 33, verse 2, that God is sending an angel before me to drive the enemies away from my family so that their plans will not succeed. 
in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth, according to the torment that I pass through the thirty, that I shall chase a thousand with my prayers. I shall chase a thousand enemies with my prayers. In the name of Jesus. I stand on first John chapter five verse four to confess with my mouth that through my faith in God I have overcome the world and all the forces of darkness that have risen against me. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth, according to Jeremiah chapter fifty one verse twenty, that I am the Lord of battle axe and the weapon of war. In the name of Jesus that with this battle axe and the weapon of war, which I am, I shall break the enemies into pieces. In the name of Jesus. Help the doors that I confess with my mouth that the Spirit of the Lord helps me in my play times of weakness. According to Romans 8, verse 26. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. According to Second Corinthians chapter 12 and 10, in the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth that I have the mind of Christ. According to Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, and also according to Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, the enemies cannot act with me in this battle. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth that the power of Christ from my altar of prayer shall seize and destroy every evil oppression, and they shall tear down and burn to ashes all evil authors that have been raised against me and my family. According to 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 4 to 5, in the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth, O oh, Jesus, that I have the authority to cast out demons in the name of Jesus, according to Mark 17, yes, my Lord, I confess with my mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ shall train me for battle so that I can use the strongest bow as a weapon to fight the enemy, according to Psalm 18, verse 34. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth Standing on Psalm 144, verse 1, that the Lord Jesus Christ shall train my hand for war and my fingers for battle. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth that in this battle, that in this prayer match, I am more than a conqueror through Christ, according to Romans 8, verse 37. And not only that, I shall tread the mountain and crush them and made the hills like a chaff in the course of the prayer, so that as all for to have it shall be made real to my life. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth that no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper. According to Isaiah 54, verse 17. In the name of Jesus, I confess with my mouth that the word of God in my mouth is a hammer with which I shall shatter the plot of the devil against me, according to Jeremiah 23, verse 29. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus, I confess with my mouth that I carry God's flame of fire, according to Hebrews 1, verse 7, and Psalm 104, verse 4, and also, like Elijah in 2 Kings, Chapter 1, verse 9 to 15. I call down the fire of God to consume the bands of satanic hoods coming after me. Let them be pulled down. Satanic gang ups, satanic conspiracy. Oh, Jesus. Satanic hoodlums. Let them be pulled down now. Let them be arrested now. Let them be destroyed right now. Yes, my Lord. Let them be destroyed now. Jesus, satanic ruffians, let them be confused by fire. Let them be destroyed by fire. Let the Father of God destroy them. Let the Father of God cripple them. They can't stand the prayer. They can't stand the prayer. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, 
Maraba Kodo Boshereba. Oh, put your mouth, I will get to pray. Let the power of God cripple them. Anywhere they may be tonight, they are consumed by fire. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Maraba Kodo Boshereba. Mate Kete Sakayaba. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. Let him deliver you now. Let him deliver you now. The power of God is throwing the forces of darkness in the name of Jesus. Oh, put your mouth and begin to pray. Vibrate in prayer. Vibrate in prayer. The power of God is destroying the forces of darkness. Triple in the interplay at this hour. Every altar of charm raise against somebody. Let that charm cut fire. Let that charm cut fire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Holy Ghost, take over. Holy Ghost, take over. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Yeah. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Yeah. Holy Ghost, fire. Yeah. Holy Ghost fire, eh. Holy Ghost fire, oh. Holy Ghost fire, oh. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire, eh. Consume them. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire, eh. Consume them, Holy Ghost fire, eh. Consume them, Holy Ghost fire, eh? Consume, consume every sickness, consume every power, consume every forces, consume every demands, consume every trouble, consume every power, oh, consume them, Papa, consume them. Amen. Walking in dominion, we are walking in dominion. 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 We are victorious, amen. We are walking in dominion. We are walking in dominion, amen. We are walking in dominion. 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 We are victorious, amen. We are walking in dominion. We are walking in dominion, amen. We are walking in dominion, amen. Jesus, Masa Kayaba, we are walking in dominion. The power of God is leading us out of prison into the pathway of dominion so that the children of God shall walk victoriously in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. And so at this hour, before the mighty Jesus, we command every closed door to open right now. Doors closed by the powers of darkness. Let those doors begin to open now. Let those doors begin to open now. Open your mouth and begin to pray seriously right now. That the door that is open against your life by the enemy shall be closed. There are doors opened by the enemy. Doors of sickness could be opened by the enemy against somebody. We are closing them now. We are closing them now. Yes, my Lord. And the doors of good health that have been closed by the enemy, we are declaring them open now. Doors of testimonies that have been closed, we are declaring them open now. Marital doors, let them open now. Doors of favor, 
Let them open now. Begin to pray now. Begin to pray now. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Maravakorobo Shereba. Every door that has been closed by the enemies. Let those doors that have been shut by the enemy begin to open now. In the name of Jesus. We declare that the doors of God for us begin to open now. No power of the enemy could close our doors again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now, pray now. Let our doors be open now. God of heaven, we pray that you open our doors at this hour. Come down with a fire. Remove every cloud that have covered our doors. Let the doors of salvation open now. Let the doors of fruitfulness open now. Let the doors of righteousness open now. Every power blocking our doors. Let that power cut fire in the name of Jesus. Let them cut fire now. Jesus, begin to pray now, my people. Let the divine power of God begin to open the doors, open up the gates of prison now, so that people who are in prison will begin to come out. Doors of barrenness, let them be crossed right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let God lead you out of that captivity. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Let the Father of God touch you. Let the Father of God touch you. Let the Father of God touch you. In the name of Jesus, let the Father of God touch you. Let the Father of God touch you. Be delivered now, be delivered now. The power is moving now. Hey, Jesus, deliver your people again. In the name of Jesus. And let our enemies be scattered. Arise, my God. Let the enemies be scattered. Arise, O oh Lord. And let the enemies be scattered. O oh Lord, our God, rise. Arise, O oh Lord. And let the enemies be scattered. Arise, my God. Let the enemies be scattered. Arise, Jehovah. Let the enemies be scattered. O oh Lord, our God, arise in the morning, O oh Lord, O oh God. Our God, rise in the midnight, O oh Lord. Our God, rise in our families, O oh Lord. Our God, rise in our workplaces, O oh Lord. Our God, rise. Arise, O oh Lord, and let the enemies be shut down. Arise, O oh Lord, and the enemies be shut down. Arise, Jehovah, oh, and let the enemies be crippled. O oh Lord, our God, arise. Amen. My people of God, prayer is a weapon to open every closed door. Prayer is a key that opens every closed door. And even as we are praying this night, God is opening those doors now that have been closed by the enemies in the name of Jesus. And we are praying against ATM machines of people that have been blocked in the spiritual realm. Oh, Jesus. When your spiritual ATM machine is blocked, what it means that your finance is under attack. It means that your financial server is blocked. Your spiritual bank account 
is locked up. So we are praying now for open doors, for God to open every blocked ATM machine. With, I take authority tonight to cover the ATM machines, spiritual ATM machines, and back accounts of everybody in this ministry. I cover your ATM machine, brother of Jesus, and I command every blocked ATM machine to begin to work. Let them be unblocked right now in the name of Jesus. I command them to open now. People that are supposed to be millionaires in this ministry, today, in the name of Jesus, and by virtue of the prayer, receive that anointing right now, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every attack against your account, against your finances, against your job, let God destroy them tonight. I speak as a servant of God unto your financial power, that you begin to operate with the financial power, that you begin to ride on the air of financial power, that you begin to have dominion of financial power in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let God bless you the way he blessed Abraham. Let him bless you the way he blessed Isaac. The Bible tells me in Genesis chapter 27 and 12 that God blessed Isaac so mightily, such that even when he planted a seed in the land of Gera, he was able to bear much fruit. Even he planted a seed and he reaped a hundred more at the end of the year. And the Bible says that it was so because God was with him. In Genesis 27 verse 13, and the Bible said that he began to work so great became so great to the point that he became a blessing to others. Why? Because God was behind his increase. God is the God who brings increase upon his people. In Psalm 107, verse 38, the Bible says that he blessed them, that they may increase and never to diminish. Never shall their, their cattle diminish. Never shall their flock diminish. So I pray for you tonight that your account shall not diminish, your prayer life shall not diminish, your favor shall not diminish in the name of Jesus. Your relation with Jesus shall not diminish, your fire brightness shall not diminish in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. May God make you a danger of fire in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Dissolve, Marco Robo Sherema, every seat of difficulty in your life that is sponsoring this problem, let them catch fire. Every stronghold attacking your life, attacking your glory, attacking your testimonies, bringing emptiness in your life, bringing loneliness in your life, let them begin to mess now in the name of Jesus. Every power that is standing against your marriage, decree that you're not going to marry. Today, under this anointing, let your dog, your mighty dog, get open now. Let those who have anointed for ministry, let your ministerial anointing begin to open now. Let your ministerial doors begin to open now. Let them begin to open now. People that have gifts that are not manifested, receive manifestation of those gifts now. Receive the anointing now. Anointing to trigger the manifestations of your gifts in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. The Bible tells me that God is able to make all things possible. For with God, everything is possible. All things are possible. And so even now, may that God make possible. Everything that the enemies are attacking you, making those things not to be impossible, may God make them to be possible. May God make you extraordinary in the name of Jesus. For you are a child of God. May God bless you from Zion. You are blessed, child of God. You are blessed in the morning. You are blessed every time. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Whatever place you are now, bring your private petitions now. This is the time to bring just your private petitions. I don't know who God wants to touch at the point of his or her private petitions. Don't begin to talk to him now. As the song is now flowing, begin to talk to the Lord now. Talk to him, talk to him. This is one minute prayer. But this one minute can mean the difference between what has been going on in your life and what, what we begin to go from today. Just talk to God now. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are a mighty God. As your people are putting their hands to you, Father, touch them. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Answer our prayers, Lord. Answer our prayers, Lord. You are a prayer answering God. Your word says, call on me and I will answer you. Even now, Father, we are calling on you. Father, answer your children. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' super mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. And that brings us to page 17 of our prayer manual. 
the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. One, two, three, go. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the ruin of souls. Amen. The page 18, the animal Christi, that is soul of Christ. One, two, three, go. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you again. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my 